we're very excited about opening the Petria study, the PET response adaptive therapy for patients with follicular lymphoma because uh, everyone is an individual. Everyone's follicular lymphoma is a little bit different. And for the patients with high tumour burden, those patients for whom watch and wait is no longer appropriate, who need to receive antibody chemotherapy, the Petraea study is a really important study uh, for patients to be screened for. And that's for patients with uh, high tumour burden or advanced follicular lymphoma uh, who need first line treatment. It's not for patients in the setting of relapsed disease. And patients uh, will receive antibody chemotherapy, um, generally rituximab and uh, CHOP or CVP or potentially bendamustine uh, for six odd cycles initially and then the study really comes uh, at the end because at the end of treatment we have shown that PET status, whether your PET scan still lights up to suggest uh, residual lymphoma activity or not, that is a very important predictor, not just of progression-free survival, so remission status, but also of overall survival. And so what we're doing is we're separating patients out on the basis of their PET status at the end of their induction immunochemotherapy for first-line treatment of follicular lymphoma. And the patients who remain PET positive will be randomized, so it's like a, it's a phase three randomization, to rituximab maintenance, so rituximab antibody induction every two months for two years, compared to rituximab maintenance plus lenalidomide, uh, which has been shown to be very effective in the treatment of follicular lymphoma. And we're trying to see whether we can improve on the otherwise poor prognosis for that small minority of patients who remain PET positive after uh, treat, initial treatment of their follicular lymphoma. Now the good risk group are the patients who become PET negative. So all those Christmas tree lights on the PET scan that indicate the sites of the lymphoma have all switched off and those patients have a very good prognosis and can anticipate a remission lasting for many years. Now, traditionally what we have been using uh, for many patients, not all patients, but many patients in Australia, uh, is where they have been receiving rituximab maintenance, uh, infusions of the antibody every two months for two years. But we know there's a cost to that. And the main cost is the infectious risk, the increased risk of bronchitis and sinusitis because of that prolonged immune suppression of the antibody maintenance. We know the antibody maintenance prolongs uh, remission duration or what we call the progression-free survival. But at the end, there is no overall survival advantage, probably because patients when they relapse don't do quite so well when the antibody is reintroduced. So what we want to measure in this patient population who become PET negative, who have very good risk of disease, is what is the trade-off in terms of infectious toxicity for a progression-free advantage um, and quantify what is that progression-free advantage for that patient if indeed it exists. Because we really don't know in which patient population, the PET positive or the PET negative, where that rituximab, rituximab maintenance offers an advantage. So Petraea is using PET status at the end of treatment as a platform for an individualised therapeutic approach, trying to maximise the efficacy of therapy while minimising its toxicity. They ask their haematologist which sites are recruiting to the Petraea study. Um, we've opened at Concord Hospital here in Sydney and St George Hospital in Sydney have just opened up in Cogra as well um, and very soon uh, Royal Hobart will open followed by a series of other sites ac across the country.